Greetings people, it's Mr. Pull the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So as I was introspecting and um, reflecting about the issue of Ruth Matthew, there are so many things that I want to bring to your attention concerning Christianity, especially African Christianity. Because Christianity is universal, but we have this special sect in Africa that we have labeled as Christianity. Yet it's just a diabolic entity altogether that has just associated itself with Christianity so that it can manipulate, so that it can benefit the leaders and the pioneers of specific institutions and small, small subsidiaries of this religion called Christianity. In this case, I'm talking about uh, the so-called men of God in Africa. My question to them is, why are all of them quiet? about the issue of Ruth. Why is boy quiet? Why is Oyedepo quiet? Why is Chris Okafo quiet? Why is, it, why is Isaac Idaosa quiet about this? Why is Bushiri quiet about it? Why is Chris Oyakilomi quiet about it? Makandiwa, why is he quiet about it? Magaya, your Kenyan charlatan, Lucy Natasha, only to mention but a few, but these are some of the ones that you celebrate. Why are your daddy GOs silent? We are talking about a situation whereby a young crippled lady lost a child at church. In church, after having gone for consultation with the so-called man of God, and the child mysteriously disappears, and the news hits the digital spaces, I don't want you to mistake this message that I'm saying here. To start thinking that your, your, you know, your famous the DGOs are not watching. They are gathered here. Not only them, them and their entire administration. They are part of you people that are watching. They just don't have the guts to comment or like or share. But this message is getting to them. I can promise you one thing. the boy is watching with you here. Oedepo is watching with you here. Bushiri, any charlatan, Omoto is here, he's watching. All the vagabonds in Nigeria, they're watching. All the vagabonds in Ghana who are calling themselves prophets, they're watching. All the false prophets in Africa and other international people are watching with us here. So many media houses in Nigeria, they are watching. Respectable people, politicians are watching. The biggest question that I have for them, especially your DDGOs, your mighty men of God, your majors, your generals of God, after hearing of this incident, let's give them the a benefit of the doubt in the past that this incident was, you know, was covered up. It was hidden. It was concealed so that no one knows about it. But I've brought it to the open that Ruth Matthew went to Jeremiah Omoto's shrine to seek consultation. She paid a lot of money, a lot of nairas. The money that she worked for, she suffered for, selling at the market. She took that money, those small pennies that she sweated for. She went to see the man of God, Jeremiah Omoto, as you call him, your senior prophet, because she had a problem. Jeremiah Omoto could not give her admission, could not allow anyone to let her in until she paid. Was it 18,000 Naira? Until she paid to see Jeremiah for one-on-one, -on -one, as they called them. But their consultations. These are which doctors that you are calling prophets. Anyone who charges, I've said this and I'm saying it again. Any so-called man of God who charges you a fee for them to hear from God as they claim or for them to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with you is a charlatan, is a vagabond. And is a ritualist, is a sangoma, is a babalao. If you have ever paid in your life to see a so-called man of God, a prophet, an apostle, or anyone, you are not consulting with God. You are consulting with a babalao. You are consulting with a sangoma. You are some consulting with a witch doctor, because only those people charge consultation fees, because they have to hear from certain gods. Our God does not require you to pay any money for Him to speak through anyone or for him to speak a word into your life. 
That's why your things are not working. Because you have been consulting to foreign gods who are in the disguise of your current so-called man of God. So this little woman, she took her hard end money, her hard end income to go and consult with Jeremiah, hoping Jeremiah is going to bring a resolution into her life. Only for her to lose her, her son, her two-year-old, five-month son at this particular shrine of Jeremiah Omoto in Messiland. Now that we have brought this issue to the attention of the world, to the attention of your dead GOs, to the attention of Adeboy or Adepo, they are watching those vagabonds. Believe you me, or even though you call them your, your big, big, I don't care about them if they're not standing for the truth. If they are not fighting a good fight. Why shall it profit a man to gain the whole world whilst he's losing his soul? If they were men of God, any of your Nigerian vagabonds, if they were men of God, real men of God, your daddy GOs, why are they quiet about this? Why are they not condemning or fighting for, this, for justice of this particular lady, whom their fellow men of God has disgraced, whom their fellow men of God has robbed? We're talking about life here. A two-year-old boy went missing. Why is, why is Oye Depo quiet about it? Why is he not talking about it? Why is Chris Okafor not talking about it? Why is Joshua Iginla not talking about it? Why are your major, major prophets not talking about it? No, they're not watching you. No, they don't even have time to listen to what you're saying because you are mad. You are mentally sick if you think like that. What I'm doing here, I've become the, the, <laughs> the biggest threat in the kingdom of darkness because they're running shrines, all of them. I've become the biggest threat to their sources of income. Even though you tomorrow you see them on their live broadcast with masses gathered at their, at their shrines, you don't understand the impact that I've caused. You don't understand the destruction, the disruption that I've caused to their finances, to their incomes. Because when you see them gathering multitudes of people in Nigeria, they don't need much of money from those people. The offering that those, those gullibles in Nigeria pay, that those thousands of people in Nigeria pay, or the tithes that they pay at these shrines, they don't use that money for anything useful. Because those people are only contributing peanuts. They are only contributing 8,000, 4,000, just little amount. Because most of them, they are being attracted to come to that church because they believe Jeremiah Omoto will give them money. But those people are not what we are targeting. Those people, we are fighting as well to win their souls. But first, we are trying to disarm their financial arms, their pillars of contribution, of financial contribution, who are overseas, who are in the Western countries, who are in the European countries. Because those are the people that they target. Those are their main donors. These occultic shrines are businesses. The people that they gather, they are just for a proof of concept. They are just for demonstrations and gimmicks. They don't care about their tithes. Even if they get those tithes from those people, they are not even enough for them to buy the private jets that you see them flying with, to buy the luxurious cars that you see them driving, to live the exclusive lifestyle that you see them living. They're not, used, they're not living that life with the money of those gullibles. They don't, they don't give them any money, those people. Any money that can make them build something of relevance. But they're just using those crowds to convince people on the international scope that they're doing the work of God. Those are the people that they're targeting. The people on the ground are just subjects. So we are not threatened when you, when you see them tomorrow after we expose them here. We see them tomorrow with thousands of people gathered. Don't be threatened. Don't be moved. Where we are hitting them is where it hurts. Once we disarm them from the international supporters, they will become very vulnerable and very weak. Whenever they fight me, whenever they threaten me, whenever they send people to come and attack me physically, they want me to zip my mouth because they know that my message is making sense to the intellects on the international scope. This message will not be easily relatable by people on the ground. 
People on the ground have been brainwashed and they've been blinded to the core. So for them to see the truth, it will take ages. They say you can't see the picture if you're in the frame. Those people that are on the ground, they are in the frame, so they can't see the picture. But those ones on the international scope, once we start doing this and you know, connecting dots for them, enlightening them and giving them the truth, they'll start waking up. Once they start waking up, they'll stop, they'll stop funding these shrines. And once they stop funding these shrines, we are disarming them slowly but surely. So you might think we're not making progress, but the charlatans know that I'm hitting them where it hurts. Because my biggest audience is in America, it's in Australia, Japan, Finland. Very relevant people. You will not see them in the comment section, but they are watching. And it's making sense to them. But you can't convince a regular, an ordinary person from worry to relate to this. The only thing that they can think of when I expose their father is to fight me back, is to threaten me, is to cast as patients, is to intimidate me. Because they've been blinded on the ground. So this is a message that I have to the African prophets. And I'm very disappointed in them. In the so-called men of gods in Africa at large. You are a disgrace to the body of Christ. Why haven't you stand up to put this criminal of yours, to put this unjust cancer virus, whim, your fellow con men, Jeremiah Omoto, occultic men, to justice? Why haven't you you know, condemned him? Why haven't you publicly, not privately? If you are of God, you will come publicly and say no to injustice. Why are they quiet about it? And the answer to this is they are part of it. They are doing the same. They are birds of the same feather. So they will never stand against each other. This occultic lineage, it's a group. They are together. They might not be taking pictures together, hosting programs together, but they have some certain you know, convention that they have on their own, discussing how far they can go with this occultic you know, business of theirs. These people are diabolic. Whosoever remains silent in cases of injustice, he is supporting the perpetrator. He who chooses to remain neutral in cases of injustice is supporting the perpetrator. If they can't come out and say no to what Jeremiah Omoto is doing, it only means one thing. It means they are part of it. So when you people come to me and say, Oye Depo is an honorable man, Adebayo is an honorable man, I see all oh, that is nonsense. This is the time for them to show that they are honorable. This is the time for them to prove themselves and fight for the weak and fight for the vulnerable. Because Jeremiah Omoto, what he did to Ruth is inhumane. It's diabolic. It's not right. It's unjust. That's why you see most bloggers in Nigeria, they will not run with these stories. Most of them are in the pockets of these criminals as well. Most politicians, they will not fight for the cases like this. They will not even speak out in cases like this because they are also in union with these charlatans. You may wonder why are politicians not raising up to these false churches? Why are they not saying a word about this? These politicians of ours in Africa are very corrupt. The ones in Nigeria are even worse. And they are using these churches. This is a topic for another day, but let me just enlighten you a bit. They are using this church. Your popular politicians, your corrupt politicians, they are using these churches to launder money out of the country. That's one of their pathways to launder money, churches. That's why your African churches are well protected. These big shrines, they are well protected. You see them buying jets. Where do you think that money is coming from? Where do you think it's coming from? Wake up. Wake up. Where do you think it's coming from? You think it's coming from your tithe? No. 
Your tithe is being used to sleep with young women. Your tithe is being used for these miscellaneous expenses, things that don't matter. When you give money to Okafo in offering, he's going to use it to sleep with whoever that he comes across. When you give your money to Iginla, he's just going to go around, your tithe, your offering, he's going to go around sleeping with whoever, people's wives and stuff like that. When you give your money to the likes of Bushiri, he's chowing it with young women, with slay queens. That's what they are using your offerings and tithes. Now you see them buying private jets. You see them <laughs> living the most expensive lifestyle. You think the money is coming from tithes. No, it's not. They are laundering money using the church. And whenever they launder money for business people and for politicians, they get probably 25% of whichever money that they are laundering, the amount. And I'm not talking about small funds here. Huge sums of money. This is very sensitive information. They will shake hearing this because that's the truth. That's how they're buying jets. Imagine if they're laundering 5 billion. And this money that they launder, this is money that is supposed to be used to develop African economies. Now we wonder why there are no job opportunities in Africa, in our African countries. It's because of the union between these politicians, these churches, and they are working together. And who's being disadvantaged? The citizens, the majority, who live in poverty forever. The man that is supposed to be channeled to the developmental projects in our countries, they are using it to take it out of the country, using these churches. Because these churches are not audited, are not regulated. These churches are the biggest loophole in our economies. Hence, we should advocate also for the closure of all these shrines. Or we should ask the governments to intervene. We need proper leadership in Africa as a whole. These churches, they don't pay tax. They need to be audited and monitored because they're the biggest loophole. They've caused the greatest economic imbalances in our nations. And we are the ones on the receiving end. We are the ones suffering. Why should they not be regulated if they are making the most money? If their pastors, the DDGOs, are buying private jets, why are they not paying tax? They're just business institutions that are making 1,000% profit, 1 million percent profit. And they're not being held accountable for their expenditures. But they're taking money out of the system. And this is the money that they're going to be using to live a luxurious lifestyle. This is the money that they're going to be using to oppress people. This is the money that they're going to be using to bully believers, to threaten people, to kill other people. Anyone that goes against them disappears. So there's a lot that this, this shrines. There's a lot of damage that they've caused to our people, to our nations. Hence we call for, you know, for, for presidents. We need leaders like the president of Rwanda who came and destroyed and closed all shrines and put certain procedures and processes that needs to be adhered to for a church to operate. Now we have 16-year-olds, 20-year-olds 25-year-olds. Why do we need 25-year-olds coming to preach the word of God? The word of God. These young ones have not even yet understood the Bible, but they're coming to stand in front of you to preach to you. Which word are they going to deliver to you? Things of God have no age, but these vagabonds, they don't even read the Bible. They have not yet even read the Bible. They just have foolish and garbage doctrines that they're coming to feed you and you think you're receiving. The point I'm trying to make here is why are your DDGOs quiet? Because they are part of this. Let me make you, like I told you, if anyone supports anything that is evil, is part of it, and is as guilty as the one who is perpetrating it. They are silent about Omoto's situation because they are one in the same, they are birds of the same feather. Let me make reference to the Bible. And let me extract this quotation from Romans. This was Apostle Paul was writing to the Romans. And he was addressing the issue of homosexuality. Telling them those that are quiet about this. Those that are in support of this. Or those that are clapping for this. They are as bad as the ones that are committing it. So those that are in support of Jeremiah. All those vagabonds that are supporting Jeremiah. And all these dead GOs that are quiet about this. They are also as guilty as Jeremiah Omoto. And God 
judgment will descend upon them. They are all under God's guess. They are all under God's curse. Because they are part of it. If you can't raise your voice about it, you are as guilty as the one who did it. And you know the truth. If you come here to defend Jeremiah Omoto, yet I have produced to you the evidence and the truth about the atrocious things that Jeremiah Omoto has done to Ruth Matthew. And you still choose to come and defend him on top. You are as guilty as Omoto. You will be judged with the same judgment by God. Listen to the letter that uh, Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans concerning the issue of remaining neutral and concerning the issue of applauding and defending the perpetrators of injustice. This is what he said. It's relatable. Here he was talking about homosexuality, but it's relatable to the issue that I'm talking about. And it's Romans 1, verse 28 to 32. He said, Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind, so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanders, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death. They not only continue to do these very, very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So if you approve of these people who are practicing evil in the church of God, you are as guilty as the perpetrators. If you are defending Omoto, if you are defending Adeboye, yet I tell you that he's occultic and I prove it to you that he's doing occultic rituals, you are as guilty as Adeboye. If you are supporting Jeremiah Omoto, in as much as I bring you, I, I did a video with Ruth. That video is recent where she was talking. It's a day old. And you still come and say, no, our father Jeremiah Omoto. Let me tell you, my friend, you are as guilty as Jeremiah Omoto. And the wrath of God is going to descend upon you and you'll be judged upon the same standard. So be very alert and fight for the truth only, not for men. Defend Christ alone, not men. Men doesn't deserve your allegiance. Men is cunning. Men is unrighteous. Men is not perfect, but Christ is. You never go wrong if you stand for Christ and fight and defend Christ. Stop defending these evildoers. Stop filling in the gap for them. They are living the life that you probably never live in your entire life with the money that you have been giving to them. They are not worth celebrating. They have no integrity. They are vagabonds and they are criminals. That's why they will never raise their voices to stand against injustice and immorality and fornication and all the other abominations in the Bible. The only thing that they'll come to preach to you about is money, prosperity, and fake miracles, fake declarations, yet they are not of God. So it's a shame to have leaders that we have in our churches today who are not willing to go against all odds to defend the truth and to defend the body of Christ and to defend you, the believers who worship at their shrines. Because tomorrow is going to be you losing a family member in these occultic shrines. And you need the voice of us. Today you are defending them. Just wait when your turn comes. And you know how much it feels and how much it pains to be in the shoes of Ruth Matthew. With that being said, I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Enlightenment series. I'm out.